Cash is bad. So I have the benefit of nine years in Africa, basically, and uh, that's where it came to life. Cash is the enemy of the poor. Cash is the enemy of smart governments, smart cities, anything smart, in effect. There are um, several challenges, uh, and if you have to pick a few, I think it is, it is to do with um, uh, the inertia. Uh, and the other um, uh, issues, of course, with respect to um, the limited access to, uh, to financial services and access to uh, transaction accounts, as we call it, which is the fundamental requirement to, to be able to do electronic payments. Um, and then the last thing is, is also uh, to some extent about um, uh, the lack of availability of um, products which are designed to meet the needs of the, uh, of the particular stakeholders, uh, which, will, which will motivate them to, to shift towards electronic payments. You know, cashless practices, let's, let's call it, are even better for more effective companies. Especially small and medium-sized enterprises, for whom it costs quite a lot if they use cash instead of using electronic payments. Actually, digital payments uh, is very helpful in, in uh, reducing the risk of, uh, of uh, corruption. Because, uh, first of all, uh, there are fewer transactions, there are fewer middlemen, uh, and, and there is much greater transparency. Um, it's about gaining access. and we talked a little bit about you know, dignity um, and courage. Um, so I think that is, you know, at the end game, what, what the benefit is for every consumer, banked or unbanked. And I think there's, there's benefits in the emerging markets as well as the developed markets from an efficiency perspective. To think specifically, for example, the Mayor's Office of uh, Technology and Innovation, Thinking about how do we use the, the digital revolution, uh, the Internet of Things, to make sure that uh, we empower everyone in our city, not only those who already have access to the Internet of Things, but really everyone in the city. Financial inclusion and act is a is a big goal and an important goal, and and. It, Technology, we all know that can play a, a great, uh, can be a great solution to that. What we need to think about, we need to think about innovation not only in terms of new sustainable energy solutions or healthcare solutions. But, but systems, commercial and financial systems that uh, can help them in this in this process and uh, move towards a more you know, less cash based system. The problem of cash is so significant that there's really no one that can solve this by themselves. So you have to have cooperation across governments. We cannot achieve any of this if the private sector governments and multilateral institutions like IFC don't work in partnership. If we do it single-handedly, we're never going to get as much traction as if we do it in partnership. That's what excites me most about this agenda. If you get the right regulation, you got the right market infrastructure, and you're not talking to just one part of the government, it's a pretty good start. But the solutions to help the government are most likely coming from the private sector. And again, here in the private sector, you have to see that there is players in the technology space, players in digital space, players in the infrastructure space. All of that has to come together. So some of the most successful, impactful programs at scale that address the problem of cash are programs where you have multiple parties around the table. I think you need a buy-in, as I said before, uh from kind of the whole, all the actors, the business, the banks, the, and the people themselves, and the public, and, and the government too. Uh, because if only one or two of them, of these actors, are promoting, then you won't get the whole thing. And I think that's been very uh, characteristic of the Danish uh, development, that everybody bought into it. I mean, I think the thing that MasterCard has signed up to, you know, to, to bring 500 million people into the into bankability is already a great incentive and a great target because by MasterCard acting as a champion others have joined as well. I think we are leapfrogging now um, and I, I've seen you know, 
MasterCard doing a, a great deal in this area and its objective of bringing micro entrepreneurs into the formal economy um, is just a, a, a tremendous way of um, leading the way on this. We have been working, and when I say we, the industry, all the players around the world to provide access. Access is a simple account that is capable to transact, to make payments, the car and the mobile. Both are bringing very, very good benefits to the end consumer, and particularly to the underserved. Why? Because with the car we have the security and the way to buy stuff in any supermarket or convenience store of the town. But from the mobile component, I can check my balance. That is a big difference, because with cash, I'm controlling my balance every minute during the day. With the mobile, I can cover that need. You're driving out cash, displacing cash. It makes sense for so many reasons. Um, it makes sense from policy reasons, transparency, security. We talked about all of that. For us, from a business perspective, it is at the heart of our strategy. We are about electronic payments. We are, therefore, about displacing cash. So that's what we should be thinking about every day. This is not only a problem that is you know, an issue for the underserved in emerging markets. Here in the United States, it's just as much of an issue because transparency issues, inefficiency, government savings, all that comes up everywhere. Um, with the right kind of solutions that work for every type of consumer that is still believing cash is the better solution, if we have the right solutions that tell them that, in fact, what we do is the best solution for them, that's how we will displace cash. It makes ultimate business sense for us to do that.